Hello everyone, this is Razan from Pendleton, Oregon. Today I'm going to talk about solar organic carbon dynamics in Pendleton Phillips Fertility Long Term Experiment. Uh, Oregon State University Fulham Medicine Agricultural Research Center have several long term experiments established in the forest. These long term experiments uh, serve as a valuable resource for Eastern Oregon producers to understand impact of agricultural management practices on soil quality and crop production. The studies at Pendleton Long Term Experiment revealed nearly 50% soil organic carbon loss from 0 to 60 cm soil depth in winter wheat summer fallow system. When we looked at soil organic carbon in surface soil, uh, soil organic carbon content in wheat fallow system was uh, uh, nearly 70% uh, less as compared to undisturbed grassland. Therefore, I became interested to understand how soil organic carbon dynamics changes with tillage and nitrogen management practices in uh, dryland winter wheat uh, fallow system. Before uh, going to soil organic carbon dynamics, I would like to start with uh, definition of soil organic matter. Here in this picture we can see uh, crop residues in different states of decomposition and soil organic carbon include all carbon containing compound uh, or all carbon containing plant and animal residues uh, ranging from very fresh residue to highly decomposed highly stabilized humified soil organic material. This uh, soil organic matter in different states of decomposition respond differently to management systems and changes in soil environment. Uh, therefore, uh, when we uh, discuss about the soil organic matter dynamics, we can classify soil organic matter into different groups. Uh, and, uh, in this presentation, I will be using three pools approach to classify soil organic matter in which uh, active pools of organic matter includes uh, all fraction of uh, organic uh, materials that turns over within a year and supplies nutrient for crops grown in the next season. For example, mineralizable carbon and nitrogen, easily decomposable organic uh, materials and microbial biomass uh, comes into this fraction and sometimes people uh, also define this fraction as a light fraction uh, soil organic matter and uh, slow pool soil organic matter are similar to uh, light fraction soil organic matter but takes relatively longer time to decompose for example it takes uh, uh, several decades to decompose and release nutrients and some of these organic matters are pro protected from mineralization within a soil structure for example, aggregate protected soil organic matter. And uh, another pool of soil organic matter takes uh, centuries to millennia to decompose, and then that fraction is uh, classified as passive pool soil organic matter. For example, some harder tissue uh, structure and some uh, complicated compounds, uh, humified molecules. So, this uh, fraction of soil organic matter is a reservoir of uh, nutrients in, in the soil system. In undisturbed uh, condition, slow and passive pool soil organic matter constitute major fraction of uh, soil organic matter. But under disturbance, this uh, slow pool soil organic carbon is, uh, carbon, uh, is transformed into active pool soil organic carbon. And then in disturbed systems, such as agricultural systems, active pool soil organic carbon is uh, really big, and then this pool uh, can contribute nutrients, but at the same time, that is very sensitive to management and easily labile to loss due to repeated uh, tillage activities. Therefore, my research objective were to evaluate the effect of tillage and fertilizer nitrogen management on soil organic carbon dynamics in uh, winter wheat summer fallow system. Specifically, 
I looked at 24 hours soil respiration, potential living life level carbon, microbial biomass carbon, and uh, soil metabolic quotient to understand the system responses to tillage and nitrogen management. We used uh, tillage fertility long term experiment for this purpose. Then uh, this experiment was established in 1940 uh, in the wheat fallow system. And this have a three tillage systems and five nitrogen rate treatments replicated three times. These three tillage systems include mallboard flow tillage, offset disk tillage, and soft surface drip. And uh, these treatments have been mod modified in several times uh, time periods. Uh, specifically, nitrogen rate changed changed over time. And then uh, from 1988 to 2010. Uh, five nitrogen rates compared in this uh, study include 0, 45, 90, 135, and 180 kg nitrogen application. Soil samples were collected uh, during summer 2014 from plots that received 0 and 90 kg nitrogen application under each tillage systems, and we measured potentially mineralizable carbon by aerobic incubation method in which 20 gram soil samples were aerobically incubated uh, in 1 liter per jar and CO2 released during incubation period were collected uh, into syringes and measured into Lycor for um, carbon content and microbial biomass was determined by fumigation incubation method and microbial metabolic quotient was determined as a ratio of uh, soil carbon respirate, uh, soil carbon respired during week period to soil microbial uh, biomass carbon. Here comes the result. Uh, example: 24 hours soil respiration was significantly higher under strip and disk tillage than in the plow tillage system in 0 to 10 centimeter soil depth. And the response of uh, plow tillage uh, on 24 hours soil respiration was higher uh, than disc and strip tillage in 10 to 20 centimeters soil depth. We did not see any difference in uh, soil respiration in 20 to 30 centimeters soil depth. And in addition, we also uh, observed response of soil nitrogen application, specifically in plow tillage system in 10 to 20 centimeters soil depth. Potentially mineralizable carbon also followed similar trend. Specifically, disc and strip system have higher uh, potentially mineralizable carbon than plow tillage system in 0 to 10 centimeters soil depth. We also observed a difference in potentially mineralizable, uh, potentially mineralizable carbon content um, between two nitrogen rate treatments in strip tillage system. In 10 to 20 centimeters soil depth, uh, the response of nitrogen was observed only in flow tiller system, and then uh, potentially mineralizable carbon content was also higher in flow tiller system than under disc and strip tillage. And uh, the more interesting response of uh, treatments were observed in 20 to 30 centimeters soil depth. Uh, I'm not quite sure what is going on in the systems. But uh, plow tillers uh, systems uh, had a higher nitrogen, potentially mineralizable carbon with nitrogen addition, and then potentially mineralizable carbon was decreased with nitrogen addition in disc and strip tillage system. Soil microbial biomass followed more or less similar trend uh, as uh, 24 hour soil respiration and uh, potentially mineralizable carbon. Uh, there was no nitrogen uh, rate response in 0 to 10 centimeters soil depth in any tillage system and uh, microbial biomass was highest under disc tillage in 0 to 10 centimeters soil depth and it was uh, higher in flow tillage system than other two systems in 10 to 20, to 20 centimeters soil depth microbial biomass carbon was not significantly different in 20 to 30 centimeters soil depth in uh, soil depth. 
12 metabolic question showed some interesting trend. Uh, this specifically 12 metabolic question was significantly influenced by both nitrogen application and tillage systems. For example, in top 10 centimeter, uh, it was higher under disk and strip tillage than uh, under flow tillage and nitrogen application increased uh, soil metabolic quotient. Whereas in uh, lower soil depth, nitrogen application increased the metabolic quotient, but uh, the response was higher under flow tillage than under other tillage systems. For example, in 20 to 30 centimeters soil depth, the only difference in nitrogen rate was observed in flow tillage system, but no difference in uh, disk and sweep tillage system. When we looked uh, uh, microbial activity indices uh, in response to the soil mineralizable carbon content, uh, we found that 24 hours soil respiration increased linearly with increase in potentially mineralizable carbon content, indicating that a 24 hour soil respiration could represent well with uh, potentially mineralizable carbon content. And soil metabolic quotient, which is the ratio of uh, mineralizable carbon with microbial biomass, actually did not increase linearly with uh, mineralizable carbon content, indicating that microbial biomass or microbial response to mineralizable carbon content uh, was constrained by some other environmental factors with uh, higher uh, mineralizable carbon availability. So what can we conclude from this experiment is a minimum tillage approaches such as disk and sweep can increase uh, soil organic carbon accrual uh, mainly by improving mineralizable carbon accumulation and with a dispro disproportionate increase in soil metabolic quotient or uh, disproportionate uh, change in microbial activity and potentially uh, accumulation of potentially mineralizable carbon. And soil nitrogen uh, addition also have a similar effect that can uh, enhance the soil uh, microbial activity and increase uh, potentially mineralizable carbon content. But the risk here is that this uh, high, highly sensitive fraction of soil organic matter can be easily lost uh, under disturbed systems. So repeated tillage uh, can cause loss of this accrued benefit in the systems. With that, I would like to thank you all for your time to go through this presentation. And I would like to thank my research team uh, and Tri Universities and REIT for providing me this opportunity to share my research with you all. Thank you.